if you're not technical and you're not interested in color grading, do not watch the next few minutes. It will be boring as hell for you. So apologies if it's your thing, carry on watching. So I sometimes get questions about how I color my videos. I'm not, I'm to, can you baby, can you be quiet? So I sometimes get questions about how I color grade my, my footage. I'm not like a super professional colorist, as you may have noticed, sometimes um, these things get, oh wait, it's another birthday present for me, yay. You will have seen in some of the shots, my contrast is too high, things look a bit orange. It's, I'm learning the whole time. It's quite complex, but once you get to grips with the, the basics, it, you know, it starts to make more sense. Okay, happy birthday to me. <laughs> oh yes, most hilarious. Very droll. I don't actually know who that's from. Rosie, my little sister. That's my other sister that you haven't met yet. That's from Rosie. Thanks Rosie for the, for the horrible present. I do appreciate it though, sort of. Right. No, that's nice. <clears throat> okay, so color grading. Let's do this. Boom. Right, I'm doing a screen record. I've never done this before, so it might suck, but. <clears throat> not, not suck, but, but it, it might suck. Okay. I use an awesome bit of software called Color Finale uh, for Final Cut 10. And that is basically a plugin that has its own grading software that, that works within Final Cut 10. So, you open up Color Finale by, well, buying it and then turning on Final Cut. Then you open up your effects, open up your, t uh, your titles window and go to color finale base grade and that comes out like a text file <clears throat> so you just dump that on, over your footage that you want to grade and at the moment it doesn't do anything it looks exactly the same so then <laughs> i just got a whatsapp from my sister saying just realized that your present won't have my name on it it does have the word dick on it, just so you know it's from me. Oh, thanks, Rosie. <laughs> She's sweet. You'll meet her. She's about to have a baby. Anyway, base grading, right. So you put down the text uh, layer. When you go to color finale in effects, drag color finale on top. <clears throat> and then you've basically used the text layer as just a movable effect. You can just dump color finale onto the clip itself. I prefer to do it this way. So then you go up here and you can open in the controls panel. You've got uh, lift gamma gain controls over here. You've got curves, you've got a LUT utility, and then you've got vectors. Um, and they, they work like nodes, <coughs> a little bit like um, uh, DaVinci Resolve. So you put them in a certain order. Personally, I always put a LUT on first. So I color things as it comes in. At the moment, I'm a bit obsessed with the M31 from Osiris LUT. You've got Log and you've got Rec 709 options within there. It's a really cool LUT. It makes things look quite cinematic, a little bit more saturated than perhaps a lot of than is fashionable these days, but I really like it nonetheless. So Log and Rec 709, hands up if you know what they mean. Right, you don't need to listen to this bit. <clears throat> Anyone who doesn't understand what those mean, Log is logarithmic shooting. It's basically very desaturated, uh, color profile within your camera and when you shoot it everything looks really flat and desaturated this isn't quite log footage this is somewhere in between but log footage comes out looking more or less gray like there's no color in it. it's very washed out that's a good thing because what's happened is we've we've managed to um, keep all of the information from the picture within the bandwidth of a usable range and then once we get it into post-production i.e. here then we get to play with it so then rec 709 is a is a basically a bog standard color space it's i think it's i think it's supposed to be an approximation of what your eye sees um but it's 
it's like the, the standard for if you can get things to look Rec 709, then from there it's a good position to move forward with grading. So you've got two options here, log and Rec 709. Uh, because we didn't shoot this in log, I'm going to click Rec 709 um, because we're closer to that than anything else. And then all of a sudden, boom, there'll be a bit of a grade, there'll be a bit of a change. Uh, so I'll just show you that again. Off, on, off, on. Okay, so that's pretty cool. That's a nice start. Then we would go to our color wheels, and from here, lift is your blacks. Gamma is your mids, and gain is your highlights. So anything that's white in the image, if you push that up, will be burnt out and completely unusable. Anything that's dark in the image, if you want to get more, more detail in those dark, in those shadow areas, like here we've got a dark spot, just have a little play with the slider until you're happy. <clears throat> and then on the right you've got saturation. Um, we don't need to push the saturation too high because it's already a fairly saturated LUT. Uh, so if you know how to use scopes, do so because they are handy. Um, I'm still getting to grips with them and I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination. So using the vector scope, this line is Caucasian skin tone. So you, I'll match my gamma up to roughly where that is. And does it look right? I don't know, it's tough to tell sometimes. Um, we'll bring our shadows down a bit. Yeah, okay, nice and contrasty. Uh, push our highlights. We don't. We know we're almost peeking out because we're only on an 8-bit camera, so the information does start to fall apart a little bit. Uh, and then our mids, we can probably push a little bit further. So skin tones are at about 75 IRE. Does do I know what any of this really means? Probably not. Let's get rid of the scopes. Okay, so we've got a starting look there, <clears throat> um, and you can also pull your lift gamma gain controls around color-wise. So over here, purple. You know, and you've got uh, down here, blue, green, yellow. Um, and it's just about subtle tweaks. So let's reset that. And then we're gonna add another LUT on top. So this is our output LUT. This is once you, this is basically when you've, tr when you've cut everything as you want it, you treat it again. So for this, I like to use, and it's all, you know, it's up to you. I like to use this thing called the Ascend 70s Cube LUT, um, which is from Color Finale, I think if you sign up to their newsletter, you get it for free. So let's apply that. And now we've got a kind of like slightly warmer, slightly cool, slightly um, slightly more awesome looking, slightly 70s vibe. It's a bit over the top. So with each layer, you can change the opacity of that layer. So let's go to the LUT there and drop that down. Bring this one down to about 60. Um, and then, you know, we can also put curves on and just have a little play with that to see if we can get the contrast looking right uh, I don't want to lose the detail on those highlights I mean as I say I'm not a professional colorist by any stretch of the imagination when we when we graded my film uh, my Eddie Strongman documentary I worked with a professional colorist who was editing in base light which is a bit of software that I was I was just like oh my god what is this witchcraft um, but it looked amazing super impressed so if you get stuck into this, you can get really good results, and it does make your it does make your imagery stand out from other people's. And I would recommend learning how to use it and having a play with it. You don't have to use Color Finale; um, it just works for me. You probably get quite similar controls in Premiere if that's what you use. I know that in DaVinci Resolve you've got way more control. You've got power windows and you've got tracking tools. You can get all of those for Final Cut, but they're like extra bits of extra plugins and bits of software. I hope that's been of some use just in terms of my workflow to let you know what I do. I would always put these on after you've got a rough cut of your edit together because this sucks up a bit of your processing power. So first off, dump the, <clears throat> you know, dump the clips down, cut them into the right shape and then afterwards apply your grade. And you can apply as many or as few of these as you want. Don't forget that if you do use different cameras, um, they're not going to end up looking the same because they are different cameras. So you can't apply, you can't just do a blanket apply. If you've got drone footage, you'll have to do all that separately. It just looks so dark now. Anyway, that's my bit of a tutorial. I'm sorry if it was really boring. I promise I won't do too many of those. Uh, but if you found it useful, let me know. I'm happy to do more. Ah. Right, I was just editing the vlog where I talk about color grading and realized that the screen record I did in QuickTime only recorded this screen 
not this screen, so you can't particularly see the results of my grade. You can only see me changing the levers and stuff. So, uh, I'll do it again. I don't have time right now. We have to go to bed and then get up early, drive to Gatwick, get on a plane, blah, blah, blah. So, I will do a proper grading tutorial. I hope you. I hope what you've just seen is at least a tiny bit useful. We'll do a full one at some point. Apologies for anyone who doesn't like grading and finds that very boring. You know I love you guys. Right. My